final fucking portals opened. The Father of Lies is upon us. Sacrament. Final of the Father of Lies trilogy. I'm so happy. Brad Proctor, thank you again for giving me the chance to enter to win this. Brad's a good dude. Check out his channel. He had a giveaway. I want it. Steve Strad, the author, signed this. So that was cool. And Steve actually and I talked a little bit on Instagram. And he's really cool. Really like his stuff. Got a really dark taste in music. He, on the four afterward, introduced me to some bands. But I want to talk about this book. Uh, let's talk about it right away. And I love it. But this is going to have heavy spoilers for book two. I try not to spoil the ending of this. But the ending of this alone was fucking perfect. This is one of the... If I had to do a top ten endings... Not including, like, the epics, like Stephen King's and shit. This would be up there. This is probably one of the... If I did a top 25 endings in a book, this would probably hit that list. This ending was almost fucking flawless. This gave me a little Lovecraft with, like, a little... This honestly felt like you were reading King meets H.P. Lovecraft with a little dark, morbid sex in it. And it was fucking great. The plot is Professor Bonacci's finally going to meet Father. And they're talking about Abaddon and the place opening up and the final cult, the final sacrifice. And you got to love the first two. If you finish the first two, you're definitely going to be hooked to this plot. You're going to know about the Black Heaven's going to be open. You're going to figure out what everything was about. All the pieces wrap up in a not the best way, but I love it. I love a deep, weird ending. You ever seen the movie The Void? Very Void-like. Um... So the plot is basically Professor Bonacci and Father and Hecate and all the cult. This is it. This is where everything winds down. The final piece of the puzzle. And you figure out what happens. Are they going to open the Black Heavens? I don't want to spoil it, but it's fucking cool. So the plot, I give an A. Of course, you're going to give the plot of the third book an A because you read the first two. And just kind of know what happens. But the characters. Bonacci, I didn't like him so much in the second one. I was more for McKay. McKay's my favorite character in this trilogy because he reminded me of me. Poor bastard. Uh, but Hecate Kate sounded so hot. And Father, Father was this weird thing. And they always described it with Adam, adding animal pieces onto him. So I'm just like, my head, I'm like, what the fuck does this look like? So Steve Strad, if you watch this, send me some pictures of what the hell this guy looks like. Because he's like... He puts goat horns and stuff, and he always smells like rot and guess, decaying flesh and whatnot. Uh, and Heck and Kate was cool. McKay, very little in this. His mom and his dad are in this. Production of Bonacci's. So, I'm going to give the characters, obviously, an A. This is the third book, so a lot of it's going to get an A. But pros and cons. Pros, this one a little bit more psychological than the first two, I thought. This definitely hit on a few psychological triggers for me. Like with your mom and dad being there and like weird sex stuff and the animal parts being sewn on and stuff. The cons is though, I had a hard time like when I read a book, I read it. And in my head, this becomes like a screen and I imagine what's happening on page in my head. And it looks like a Borderlands game. Like it's got like a weird cell shaded animation, which is how my imagination works. It's like a really early 90s Tim Burton movie. And that's how my brain works. When I imagine anything, that's just the art style my brain instantly goes to. And I couldn't imagine a lot of this. So I had to like Google images of like Shul the demon and people with goat heads sewed on and stuff. And you know, a lot of that comes up. So I'm sure the FBI has come to look for me because of my search history. But the cons is I couldn't really imagine some of this stuff. It definitely was like, you know, when you read Lovecraft and it's like, and this city was so dark, words won't express it. Steve Strett did us the benefit of attempting to express it, but some of the stuff that occurred was so fucking violent, so fucking sexual. I was just like, I don't want to imagine a dude getting his penis bitten too. Does that happen in this book or book two? You'll find out. Read the fucking books. It's fucking great. It happens. It fucking happens. It fucking happens. It happens. Yeah. yeah, spoiler. <laughs> um, but let's talk about the final part, which really is honestly the big thing for me, just the wrap up, the journey. How I enjoyed the journey through the book. How was this book, this 100-page novella? It was great. Ending alone, if I just read this ending, like this book alone as a standalone, like a little bit of fluffer, I would have been thrilled. That ending was so fucking good, Steve. I loved it. I'm gushing about this. I'm so happy I finished this trilogy. Now everyone's going to say, Pruno, you just give this such a high rating because he gave it to you. You know what set everybody up? No, I don't want to say that. I don't want to say that. I really was interested with cults. Cults have always been a thing of mine. 
uh, the cult aspect of this was fucking awesome. The sex stuff in this was fucking kinky as fuck, which that's always fun. And I really like demonology. I actually go to haunted places, and you all know that spiel I do. But I do go to ghost hunting. I do like demons. I do have a whole library of cult and demonology and shit like that. And I love that shit. And this book was full of it. And it was cool, and it was dark, and it was twisted. And I like the way, I was like, if this ending sticks, this is going to be an amazing trilogy. If the ending sticks, y'all. The ending is fucking killer. I didn't think a lot of people won't like it, but I'm going to be the minority, and I'm going to say I love it. So, I'm going to give this an A. It, some of the stuff with the writing got a little wavy at times to keep it from a perfect A-plus rating. But apart from that, I'm going to give it an A. It's a quick read. This whole trilogy is like 300 pages. So, it's basically reading one average size book about a dark cult with really crazy shit happening with fun writing, fun characters, and a twisted sense of humor. And I can't ask for anything more than that. I just can't. That's just amazing. But this has been your boy Prue, guys, and thanks for sticking around. Uh, if you're still here, thank you. Um, we just got some news medically, my wife and I. Stuff's going on, so if I don't make any videos for a bit, everything's fine. We're, we're dealing with it. But if, every, if I don't make any videos for a bit, please stick around. I'm so close to hitting my 100 subscribers mark. I, I cannot wait. It, it's going to be a big jump. Thanks for watching. This has been your boy, Prue. Stay creepy.